Hello everyone, welcome back to Steven Inks, uh, a channel where we talk about the process and tools for creating pen and ink art. Uh, my name is Steven and today we are going to be talking about a pen with some special qualities. Uh, this is the Sailor Fude de Manin uh, fountain pen. And the thing that makes this pen special is that it has a Fude nib and if you look, at this nib, you can kind of see with the focus that it looks almost as if it's bent. We'll take a, a quick look up close at that. And um, these are called Fude nibs, and they are very useful for um, drawing and writing. And um, it's interesting that the last video that I posted, I asked for recommendations of pens, and Fude nib was something that came up uh, in your recommendations and it just so happened that I was already working on this pen my turnaround is not that fast that I can respond at that rate but uh, I'm glad that those of you who are watching my videos are interested to see what exactly can I do and can you do with a few day nib if you like to be a part of this community consider subscribing to this channel and making sure that these videos can get in front of more people so today we're gonna look at this pen we're gonna look at the parts we're going to fill it with ink, um, practice with it a little bit, and I'm gonna draw something for you guys, and I hope you enjoy it. Today we're looking at the Sailor Fude de Manin um, pen, and I don't know what de Manin means, but I do know that Fude is Japanese for brush, I believe. You can correct me if you speak Japanese here in the comments, but uh, I think that's what it means. And the reason will be very obvious when we start playing around with this. I have used this pen before and I've, I've enjoyed it, so I can't wait to show you the features and parts. Uh, my first impression on feeling this pen is that it is very um, plasticky. It does feel like it's made of cheap materials, so that's not a plus for it. Um, we've got sort of a sort of a cigar shape, but almost like a torpedo shape because it it's flat all the way through the body, and then just at the end it tips off, and it has that exact same um, angle on both ends on the cap on the other side. I do appreciate as a, as a clipless cap that it does include this roll stop right here. So it's called a roll stop because it literally stops the roll. Right, And some pens don't have that, and it's very frustrating to have the pen constantly rolling off the table if you're not in a 100% um, level plane, which my table, which tilts on, a, on an axis so that it can be angled, is never completely 100% level. So opening up the lid, I do have, here's the cap, roll stop. Um, that's not a scratch, by the way, that is a hair, gross. Um, and inside the barrel, again, the barrel is, it's all kind of the same plastic sort of um, motif. And uh, the only thing that's not plastic here is the nib. Um, but here's the barrel. This is a Sailor cartridge, which is proprietary, and it was not included. I had to buy this. Um, but we're gonna look at those different parts in a little bit. There's the the, um, the converter and this is the nib you can see this is what makes it the fude nib is this uh, if you'll focus this bend in the nib it's at an angle um, there's a sailor logo and it says MF which I believe means medium fine but you know could be something else. Um, and this does, the section does remove. The first time I did it, it made a really ugly snapping noise, which I did not like. And you can see that these threads on the feed got a little bent when I did that. Uh, but no damage to the pen, still functions perfectly fine. There's the nib and the section. I do love a pen that comes apart all the way so you can get it nice and clean very small section right here um, but it does line up so very nicely with the barrel that 
it's really not uncomfortable to grip it at the threads. I do tend to hold my pens further back, especially when I'm trying to draw a long straight line. I'm gonna be back here uh, up really close for details. Anyway, uh, one of my favorite features though has not to do with the pen, but actually the converter. And this is something I love it when a converter does this. Check this out. This converter has threads and you can even detach the converter completely, which means that lubricating and cleaning this converter is gonna be no problem at all. A lot of converters, even in more expensive pens, do not do this. And I say to their detriment because um, it's really nice to be able to just clean up and and completely disassemble everything, including the converter. That's where the ink goes, so that's where it's most likely to get dirty. Anyway, that's done. And uh, cool, let's ink it up and let's talk about it. So having thought about it, um, I do have one color, a green colored ink that I have not used yet. And that is gonna be the third in my Colorverse mini collection. It's called Somnium. And we are going to use this today to fill the pen. Let's take it out and we can see once again, such cool packaging from Colorverse and this adorable tiny little bottle, which comes with a, um, a pipette for eyedroppering the pen, but I took that out already because it was kind of in the way. Um, very small bottle. In fact, so small that I am not going to bother with trying to fit the section and the nib into this bottle. I know it's not going to fit, but in the case where, where that happens, what you do is um, just fill it directly through the, uh, the um, converter which usually that's going to be thin enough. I've never seen a converter that was too small for these bottles. Anyway, here it comes. All right, I'm going to actually go in again, see if I can get a little bit more ink. Well, that seems to be the best that we're getting. I'm going to use a tissue to clean off the edges, try not to get into it, and then I'm going to place the section back on, and we'll be drawing some pictures with that. Hey, guess what, everybody? New sketchbook. After many recommendations uh, over the last couple of weeks as I've been looking for paper that I like, I found some good things, some not so good things, but one that kept coming up was this uh, Strathmore 500 series mixed media sketchbook. A lot of people said this is really good. Um, it is 100% cotton, which I love for watercolor. I don't know what it's gonna do for pen and ink, but we're gonna see. Um, and this is made in the USA with materials from France, which is really cool because, um, you know, labor laws and all that being, I do like to support American made products. And, you know, there's all that stuff about French paper that people say, although I've, I've seen good and bad examples. Um, let's see, I'm gonna pull this little sleeve off and I like the cover, the cover feels nice. This is a good size for a sketchbook too. It's almost to the point where I'd feel it's it's too big, but it's definitely not um, impossibly large and it's not too small either. Um, this kind of faux leather feeling uh, outside um, and then on the inside, I do like, already I like this compared to um, the render sketchbook, which I had before. It looks like these pages will lay flat. This is gonna be great for me for drawing because I hate when the pages poke up like that. Um, it's a few less pages than that one. Uh, I, I am used to having 
uh, sketchbooks with more pages, but hopefully this will be still quite useful. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the lines on this um, from this Sailor Fuda de Manon. Uh, and I did this on purpose. I waited for this pen and this sketchbook because I'm going to really put this uh, paper through its paces and test it um, hardcore because I know that these um, Fuda pens put down a lot of ink. So I'm going to show you what kind of lines I can get from this and then we're going to draw on this as well. So first off, holding the pen how you hold it um, normally, you get a line that's somewhat like that. Okay, and I don't see any feathering. We'll look at it up close later. You can also do a side stroke where you get a really thick line like that. Um, and then lower angle, like about flat, you get again that kind of straight line. But if you go further up, and you have to become, this is a trick in and of itself, but you can get really thin lines if you point it almost vertically. And that's uncomfortable for a lot of people. It's uncomfortable for me, I'm learning. But if you think about it, being able to get let me show you the thickest line and then the thinnest line. Look at the range of lines you can get. Everything in between this thickest line and that thin line on one pen with one nib. That's kind of the exciting thing about it. Um, at least I think so. So. Um, we're also going to try some kind of different strokes for different folks. I'm going to try pushing uh, down sideways, but then twisting the pen as I go down. You're going to see if I can get, yeah, I can get like these triangular lines. I can go like that, and you can see you can get a tapering line that goes from thin to thick. All right, um, it's really easy to fill in some blocks of color that are pretty even and don't have marks on them. I'm gonna really put some ink down on this paper. Is it gonna hold for me? Ooh, it is soaked wet. And it you can see the edges here no feathering, nice texture. It's a nice feeling uh, paper texture as well. So I think this is very exciting. Um, you can kind of get like a wide circle or you can do something thin. Here's some reverse. Now reverse, you do get that. Um, it's really hard to see. You do get that really thin line when you do reverse. It's very dry though. I'm kind of feeling if I do a vertical, less control here, I would have to learn and I am kind of learning, but you get that a little bit of a wetter line here. Even after this heavy one, we are getting some, and I kind of expected that it would smudge a little bit but it's not bad, and even like this one right here, it's not smudging after about less than a minute. So let's see, what can we do? We can do with some, some art. Advice to get us going. And here's some art advice I have. This is less from a uh, visual art, well not visual art, but less from um, drawing and painting and more uh, from my background in film because that's what I studied in college. Foreground, midground, background. This is something that 
I was learning about composition when I was um, studying it in school is that there's usually a foreground, a midground, and a background. And you should treat those elements separately um, with varying levels of detail and different values. So if, for example, I have the foreground is kind of like this jungle place and I'm doing, this is not gonna look the best, but I'm just doing like some jungle brush and this is very dark. This is what's directly in front. This is maybe a rock or something. And it's just black, super dark. And that is kind of a rule. The darkest tones are usually in the foreground. And then in the midground, we would go with something a little bit lighter. So let's say it's still kind of jungle, but we've got some detail in there. Um, and then this could actually hang over the top. Um, what I'm trying to communicate here is that you can basically split most compositions into a foreground, a midground, and a background and they have differing levels of detail, differing values, and they tend to separate from each other very easily. I'm, I'm putting too much dark tones on that mid-ground right there. And then, let's see, some more. This is more foreground that I'm adding in. Um, and then from there, we would have a background, and the background will be the lightest in value. So let's say it's a city. low in detail, I'm going to do this vertical thing here, light in value, and the plan for these things is to kind of have a, a little bit of a separation between them so you have different levels I'm just adding some a little more value to this um, mid-ground here. And this kind of shows, in a basic way, how you can compose a drawing so that it has a definite foreground, mid-ground, and background. Now, not every drawing, not every artistic composition truly has this, but it's one way of thinking about it. And it's really, the really important thing for me that I learned was that you really need to step back the detail when you move towards the background. Um, you have uh, lighter values, atmospheric occlusion, which is a big fancy word for saying that the further something away is, the more uh, faded out and dim it is. And all these other things going on in your background, you need to be aware that you don't need to draw every line and uh, put all that detail into something that's just gonna be in the background. Now, this is, um, of course, a simplified version of that, but uh, the basic premise is you should think when you're composing, do you have a distinct foreground, midground, and background, and how are you keeping them separate from each other in a, as um, a way of giving the composition some kind of readability? Anyway, uh, let's with that in mind, let's go on to our drawing sample, and I can't wait to show you what it is. Wanted to give you guys a little look inside my head when I'm putting together a piece um, in a different sort of way. I thought we'd just look at my sketchbook. By the way, unpaid promotion for my wife's Instagram. Check her out if you like looking at pictures of food, specifically food that um, I'm going to eat because she makes it for me. Uh, yeah. Sweet Dreams Macarons. Um, I had this concept of a house I um, made of all kinds of different materials. Uh, was recently 
reading the Harry Potter books. I've never read the books before and I kind of liked the description of the Weasley house, how it was just kind of like a bunch of different things stacked on top of each other. So I had this idea of like a vaguely almost magical house that um, didn't have any magic into it, but it just looked like kind of if you breathe on it the wrong way, it would fall over, but it's not falling over. So there's this kind of mysterious edge to it. Um, and I spent the first part, well, actually before I did that, I did a lot of warm-ups. Um, and I do warm-ups like this. If you guys would like to hear more about the kind of pen warm-ups I do to keep my arm loose, um, let me know. I could do totally do a video about that. Uh, but I went through here and I found what kind of stack do I like? How do I like making it look like it's teetering over? I discovered that sort of, um, this was just kind of exploring and then I found something I liked a little more, tried to make it more detailed and I have this sort of C-shaped curve to it that's gonna be a feature in the final one. And then once I had some weird ideas sketched out, I asked, asked some questions that I had to solve by looking things up and checking out tutorials and things like what would these textures look like and down here how do you draw spiral staircases because this looks terrible. Um, what kind of tree is this? So I looked up different trees to find something that would really work. And then I did some of the studies, textures, um, tiles, spiral staircases. I did a little bit of the uh, perspective, kind of two point perspective work just to kind of get some ideas out there. And then I did end up going to um, a more detailed sketch and this is close to what you're gonna see in the drawing sample. Obviously I did this with a different pen because this is blue ink and I uh, just filled the pen up with green ink and I wanna use the Fude nib to see how I can make these line weights work for the different textures. And you can see a lot of things changed. Uh, some things remain the same and when you see the final picture more will have changed from this because I'm always working on different ways of showing things. And um, obviously beneath here, I was coming up with other ideas. I was labeling the parts that I thought were kind of boring. And I kept warming up my arm over here with some of these exercises. So um, anyway, all of these things uh, went into my thought process. And now I'm going to draw that drawing and I hope you enjoy it. Now straight out of the gate, something happened here that was kind of interesting as I was doing this pencil sketch. Um, just kind of realized that I did not understand the perspective of what was happening and I think it's because in my sketch I kind of started 2D and then I started going out to 3D and so I ended up erasing everything and starting over uh, also figuring out that the uh, sideways kind of um, orientation worked better but um, what I ended up doing and I'm putting a picture of that up here is I uh, I took a picture of some bricks at the angle that I wanted and used that to inform the perspective of the house. Um, and that's one example of using reference where some people would think of reference as kind of just copying a picture that you, that you took or that you found somewhere. And it can be that, but it can also be just a reference for something like perspective if you don't quite feel comfortable with it. So um, that's what I did putting together the pencil sketch portion of this drawing. And uh, I'm glad I did that because um, it looks way better than it would have if I didn't go to that extra effort. Um, in a minute, I pick up the pen and start playing around with it. Uh, I started off uh, with some reverse writing and I really like the reverse writing on this pen. It's a nice dry line, um, which is helpful in drawing because you have a lot of control over it. So it's super thin and dry when you um, when you run the lines in on uh, reverse writing and then I just went in and did all of the fine lines and then I went over um, the lines again with the front facing part of the nib where there was a greater line width um, and you'll you'll start seeing me doing that in a little bit um, how do I feel about few day nibs I, I think it's a mixed response because I love having control. I'm a little bit obsessive about control and that's, I mean, you can see me doing that with these fine lines like this. 
um, doing it this way as opposed to just kind of feeling out the piece and using thinner lines and, and thicker lines wherever. Um, so it was a challenge for me and you'll see when I turn uh, the nib over and start doing the, uh, the thicker lines because I didn't have 100% control over where the lines were. So um, I didn't like that. I think I could learn from that. So I think it's a valuable thing and I am very interested in using Fude nibs in the future. Um, I actually, there is a, a Fude nib that's available for the Hongdian Black Forest and I'm thinking about picking one of those up so that I can um, test and see what that one's like. Uh, I do actually, I think I can um, safely recommend this pen because it is a lot of fun to use. You just have to be able to um, kind of uh, be ready for some happy little accidents, change your perspective if you're a perfectionist like me. Um, and um, yeah, you can have fun with it, but it won't always do what you expect it to do. That was my experience. Um, but yeah, you can see here where some of the larger, thicker blockings of ink went in. It's way easier to set down um, a, a big block of color without having any kind of sketch marks in it because of the way the Fuji nib is, so that's really fun. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a strange little pen, but I, I like it. I'm glad I have it in my collection. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a first fountain pen um, or an only fountain pen. If you have a lot of fountain pens and you're looking for something different, here's a good way to start, especially the Fide de Manon is a, is a pretty inexpensive pen. So if you don't like this style, then um, it's better to learn that you don't like it on a less expensive pen than to spend a lot of money on something and figure out that that money was um, wasted. Anyway, uh, there we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed this drawing. this Strathmore 500 series mixed media paper. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's probably the best paper I've had so far. This paper, this drawing came out really nice. Um, it doesn't show through to the other side and there's some sunlight showing that, but if you hold it down flat, you don't get the, the image of coming through the other side. That's awesome. Um, it is a little bit expensive. I do also really like this size. It's bigger than say like a moleskin or a Electrum 19, 20, whatever the numbers are. You know what I'm talking about, you know. Um, but if I'm being honest, I'm gonna pop in with my cheap Michaels brand Artist Loft pen and ink style paper here. And I've been using this at, alongside for like practices and layouts and stuff. And I used it earlier in this video. Um, this paper is, here's some of my, my warm ups. This paper is actually still quite good. A little bit of show through, but no bleeding, no feathering. And it's a lot cheaper. I could buy four of these Artist Loft Michaels brand notebooks for the price of one of these. Yes, this is better, but at a quarter of the price, how much better is it than this? That's uh, up for each individual to, to decide. Uh, personally, I feel that I will buy more of these from time to time, um, but this is not my last time to buy one of these cheap old notebooks. They do surprisingly well, especially considering their price. We are back, okay. And having shared a little bit about the notebook, I think it's probably 
the best thing I've seen so far for pen and ink all around. Uh, gives me a lot of control and I like it a lot. Um, as far as the Sailor Fude de Manon pen, uh, which a pen of which I am sure I am pronouncing at least some of that name incorrectly. I really like what it represents. I felt at first uh, when I started using it um, that it had a lot of potential. Although I did feel a little bit uncomfortable time to time not having the correct control with my lines and with the pen. So um, it's something that I'm interested in spending some more time with to see if I can get more comfortable with it. If you're the person who likes to draw and make some sort of happy little accidents, this nib will do that very well for you. If you're kind of uh, controlling and need to have control over all your lines like me, then it might be a very challenging experience for you, but a worthwhile one nonetheless. That being said, I would also like to see what other Fude nibs are out there. I know there's one for the Hongdian Black Forest that you can attach. And there's a couple of other brands that create uh, nibs like this. So um, this is not the end of my journey with Fude nibs, but I definitely feel like I am a beginner with this. So um, thank you all for watching this video, um, for subscribing, for liking and commenting. I would love to hear what you think about Fude nibs. Have you used one before for your writing? for your drawing and what's your opinion of it. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.